Uh, are you moderating? Okay. Uh, hello all, thank you for coming this early. Uh, uh, I guess we'll start with a round of introductions. So, uh, if if you guys could please introduce yourselves. Uh, I'm I'm Kavit Munshi. I am I work for Aptira. I am the OpenStack ambassador. I run the Indian OpenStack user group, and I'm also on the board of directors of the OpenStack Foundation. So uh, I think I'll start from the left. I'm Akira Yoshi, I'm uh, from NEC, and uh, I'm one of uh, Japanese ambassadors. Okay, and nice to meet you. Hello everyone, I'm Martin Fish, and I'm one of the three OpenStack ambassadors in Europe, and I'm from Aptira also. It's very important. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm Ia Lu, I'm from China. Also, I work for China. I'm a uh, DevOps engineer. Uh, yeah, I, I write code. Uh, <laughs> also, I'm an ambassador from, uh, from China. Yeah, thank you. Oh, thank you. Hi, I'm Sean. I'm Sean. <laughs> um, I'm one of the two. Is Ken around? No, I don't see Ken. So uh, Ken, Hugh, and my, myself um, are the two ambassadors in the United States. Um, I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area. Hi, I'm Erwan. I'm ambassador uh, for uh, Europe. Uh, I'm based in France. I run uh, the French user group, um, and I work for Red Hat. So my name is Christian Behrendt. I'm working for B1 System, and I'm the third uh, one in Europe. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hi, good morning. My name is Akira Asagawa from Japan, and I'm working for the BTI. And I'm also the one of the ambassador in Japan with Yoshiyama-san. Nice to meet you. Uh, I, I am Marcelo. Uh, I am from Brazil, and I help uh, the people uh, and group is in Latin America. Hi, so I think we have a presentation with a yeah, few yeah, slides. Uh, uh, who is in charge? Yes. <laughs> so who, mm, I think the guy who made the slides should uh, present? Yeah. No, not exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you are my voice. Okay. <laughs> so. So it's only new announcements. Yeah. Uh, so we have, we have two new ambassadors, Christian and JJ J J Suk, but J Suk isn't here. Yeah, Christian is there. So uh, yeah, please, well, please we welcome like Christian. See some short yeah. Uh, so I'm from Europe, and um, I try to help um, the both existing ambassadors in, in Europe um, to build up uh, more meetups. And I will concentrate myself um, on Germany, uh, Austria, and uh, Switzerland. Yes. Next slide. And that is the guy from South Korea. Jason isn't here. Oh, hey. Yeah, maybe he's. Yeah. So That's we. Not later than me. <laughs> yeah, so we would also like to announce the ambassador program page. Uh, you can check it out at groups.openstack.org slash ambassador program. So the idea is to pair up groups with ambassador. And the function of the ambassadors will be more of a mentoring one and kind of be the bridge between the user groups and the foundation. So if you have any problems, any issues, if you have... Uh, need for sponsorship, uh, I think it's best to approach the ambassador and then they can help you talk to the right people at the foundation. Next, next time. Uh, like Tom, yeah. <laughs> Martin, can you tell a bit more about the Yeah, page? I think Tom made this in the board. Yeah. yeah, Tom. All right, so I guess. <laughs> I guess uh, the only other thing to add is, uh, you know, there are a number of people uh, probably out there in the world who are already behaving like an ambassador. They might be helping out to several user groups, uh, kind of already at the best practice level. They may have a range of ideas, and we are always looking for more ambassadors because these guys work pretty hard at the moment. So uh, do check out that page uh, to find out how ambassadors can help you and uh, if you'd like to apply for the program. 
And you can also contact your ambassador through that page. Yeah, so uh, uh, report on the community. We have grown since the last summit. We are now 40, around 40,000 members from all over the planet. Uh, I, I, guess, uh, I guess the meteoric growth has come from Asia and also uh, a lot from Europe. Right? I think all over for, from the world and we have in Vancouver around 30,000 30, people. 30,000, yeah, so in six so months. So within the six months we have 10,000 new members. Yeah, so if you look at, we, we have 19,000 from North America. Uh, we have 11,000 from Asia Pacific, 9,000 from Europe. I think we need to push a bit more in South America and uh, in Africa, and maybe you can tell us what you need from us to help you in South America, because the numbers should really be, be better. And I think, I think we have someone from Africa here, Sufian, and I think we need to encourage and support people like you to grow. Uh, but this, this paints a fairly kind of a skewed picture where we, where we are missing very two big two parts of the world. By the way, welcome Jesuk. He's one of our new members. Yeah, Hi, nice to meet you. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I missed the email Tom said I became ambassador, so I was in the dark for <laughs> six months. And it's the first time I revealed myself in here. So um, I, I really up, uh, happy to work with all uh, guys here and uh, contribute uh, to the community. And I think I'll do my best from now on. Thank you. So uh, I guess uh, I guess we would. Uh, was anyone here at the user group meeting yesterday? Yes. So there was a lot of discussion around official user groups, and there was a lot of discussion around uh, what what constitutes an official user group. So we would like to announce today that we have kind of uh, done the hard work on the official user groups. There are certain guidelines and rules to follow, and. Any, any user group can apply to become an official user group. Uh, I, I, guess, uh, I guess there is a vetting process where ambassadors and the foundation work together and figure out if the group meets the criteria for becoming an official user group. And uh, I think so far we have listed, uh, I don't know how many user groups we have, Tom, well, officially. I, I just wanted to add that uh, it's, it's kind of rather than a series of tests. It's more yeah. like a mentoring process. Mentoring so what we want is for all of the user groups around the world to be the best they can be. And uh, it's just about working with your ambassador to uh, help get uh, through uh, some, some of those hurdles. Yes. So I, I'm not sure how familiar you guys are with Big Tent and the idea of um, including as many projects as possible, but it's very similar. We're not, we're just trying to help, <coughs> excuse me help the groups understand uh, best practices. And that's really all the being an official group is, is just following the best practices so that you can be successful and not um, be frustrated trying to um, do the various aspects of running a user group. And I think, uh, I think it also gives you becoming, going through the official process, gives you an insight into what, what it takes to be a inclusive group and it also helps you coordinate well with other groups across the world through becoming a part of the user group program and you get listed on the groups.openstack.org portal and uh, that has some advantages also. Yeah. Um, so um, you can find groups.openstack.org uh, uh, rules to be uh, an official user group so uh, it's more discussion with ambassador and we, ha we, have, we have to check if uh, the group is not drive but by one company so it could take some time to discuss with, on, on to see what is the frequency of, uh, of meetups so, so for this it's quite a long process but now with this new brand and the new announce uh, for, for this summit uh, we will increase the number of uh, official user group and uh, you will have some advantages uh, as the organizer uh, of an official user group with uh, swag from the foundation yes. so not only this but uh, it, it could be good for you and for new user group it's it very good to feel that the foundation gives some 
help you to to give you some swag to to give you some content to uh, to to help to be to help you to have some sponsors so it's it's very good so we have it's quite a limited number of ambassadors but we have a dedicated zone so um, uh, try to to contact us we, we contact directly some um, some groups all new groups a uh, very good thing is a groups portal. With this group portal, it's more organized for new group. We we have a place where we can see on um, the place where we can see on um, organize a group. For example, for um, for few countries like Spain, Germany, France, we had at the beginning only one group. Uh, and with the time, the number of group in uh, in the in the country increase. So we need to organize with few uh, few group. So we have made this orga organization in groups uh, portal, and you can find, for example, in France, uh, three groups: one in uh, Toulouse, uh, uh, Paris, Lyon; in Spain, uh, Barcelona, uh, uh, Madrid, on the on the last uh, last group in the south. So so it, it's more organized, and on this tool is not only a tool to to show uh, to show events to to see the organizer, but in this tool. It, it's more easy to, to define the organization of all the group and to have statistics on data. Yes. And I think, uh, I think the, the next slide is our, our plans for 2016. So uh, we had a very healthy discussion yesterday at the user group meeting. And I think speaker directory was something that came up. So a frequent problem that, is, that has been mentioned by a lot of user groups and one that was brought up yesterday as well was the fact that there is some user groups don't have enough speakers, right? So they might do one or two meetups, and they might get a few speakers. But then it starts becoming that the same faces keep coming up all the time. And to address that, we are planning to have like a speaker directory where all the speakers from different regions are listed. And maybe we can coordinate with the groups to have them speak at various events. So they might not be able to come physically. But they can always. Above. It, it can be physically. It, can be physical, it, yes. it will not be easy all the time to have some yeah. phone uh, to 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 to, yeah. to pull. But so it, it for some countries it's possible remote. Yeah. But that depends in US uh, or yeah, that depends. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I think we are also going to do a validation of the existing user groups and uh, make sure we bring as many people into the official fold as possible. Uh, and I think uh, the next. One of the other steps will be more support from the foundation. I don't know if any of you were present at the board meeting. Uh, if you guys were, foundation has, uh, has announced a lot more support for programs and, and a lot more support for diversity. And I think that is going to include the user groups also. So there is more funding coming. There is more support coming from the foundation. And they're going to enable you to organize your meetups better and hopefully provide swag and, I don't know, uh, other stuff to sub support you guys. Uh. I could add something. So um, I've, been, uh, I've been involved with the user groups for about uh, almost three years now. Um, it, was, it was never really an intended thing. It was more of I wanted to get involved with the community, and um, one of my friends was leaving his company, and um, so I needed to jump in and either uh, help or let it let it kind of die under its own weight. So I jumped in and I got involved. And what I found out is there's a lot of energy that's um, not well utilized, um, even more so in the area that I'm in. I'm in Silicon Valley. So I invariably have people trying to give me um, a sponsorship. And I'm generally turning them away because I, I don't have the ability to have user group meetings once a week. Um, there's not the facilities for it. And we burn people out. But um, one of the things uh, I have been doing is uh, pointing um, some of the sponsors in other directions of other user groups. Um, so um, I'm hoping over 2016 we can do more of that. And uh, for areas that have, they're oversubscribed for sponsorship, that we could start directing them to other areas that are undersubscribed. So um, uh, a lot of the uh, people that are doing, uh, they're offering uh, uh, sponsorship are part of marketing programs. And um, generally, a company isn't focused in just one particular area. So we can do a better job of figuring out where those companies want to have more influence, uh, more visibility, and direct their sponsorship to those areas. So I just wanted to add. Cabbage, cabbage. Slide is already 
finish, right? Yeah, yeah. I think so it's better to move to the some yeah. discussions yeah. because uh, yesterday we have a lot of the discussions yes. about the way. So, uh, yes, Sufian. Thank you. Uh, I am Sufian from uh, Users Group uh, from Tunisia. Uh, maybe uh, in Tunisia, for example, we have problem of uh, resource. Uh, in, uh, uh, I think uh, one of uh, the objective of users group is to train people, uh, maybe young people and students, to use OpenStack. Uh, actually, we use we use TriStack. Uh, I think if uh, community can uh, give support li like. Uh, uh, hands on lab, especially to users a group to develop uh, uh, many users case to train people to use uh, OpenStack. That is, uh, th 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 for example, that help that help us to develop community and to have many other people. Yeah. So you speak of more resources uh, for Onsen. So, or, or some content also. So, for, so, yeah, we work together for one of your events to to give you some uh, some uh, resources. I about the terminal resource. Okay. So, uh, so if we take an example uh, of one of your events, uh, well, so ambassador have some connections with lots of companies, so it's quite easy for us to get some resources to contact. Uh, we have contacted a French company, or I have contacted Rackspace also, so we, we can get some resources. Um, so, so it, but you ask for more resources all the time. So, I, I, I don't know if if the foundation sh can share some hardware. But oh, I know Rackspace, for example, there is a new program with Intel. Oh yeah, there is that. Um, it can be shared between uh, many users. Too. So, um, I haven't done a very good job of promoting this, um, but um, I started about two years ago the training guides. Um, project, I guess it was a year ago, but we started the idea of it about two years ago. So um, it's had some fits and starts, but the whole idea of it is to do exactly what you're asking for, so that when 90% um, of the time when people show up, they want to learn more about OpenStack. Um, and what we were doing is we were having pretty much the same talk on OpenStack architecture over and over again, um, which is useful for the new people showing up, but then the people have been there more than once or twice, they're like, well, I. I know this, let's move on. Um, so there's a couple of ways that the foundation and um, the training guides um, effort, um, which really the most active part of it has become the upstream uh, training. Um, you may have noticed that the weekend before the summit, um, there was, a, a, it's a free to sign up, there was a two day training. Um, I'm not sure where it was this year, I think it was somewhere on, I saw the signs for it, it was um, somewhere in one of the buildings. Um, and the whole idea of it is to do essentially introductory new developer, um, bless you, um, to uh, OpenStack. <laughs> so um, that's a small part of what it would take to become part of the OpenStack community. It's obviously there's not enough time to teach you Python, um, not enough time to teach you, um, you know, really in depth how the projects work, but it gives you a two day overview. It's like a boot camp essentially. So the, the intent is to um, do more of that uh, there is a foundation-sponsored effort right now to come up with um, certified training uh, standards, um, which I helped um, start with Heidi, uh, Heidi Brights, and the Linux Foundation is um, the structure for that, and it's really, really important for the community because um, uh, we need to get to a point where we have HR managers know the quality of an OpenStack engineer and their skill level, and we don't have that right now. So, um, so combining these efforts into something that can be driven through the user groups on a consistent basis and, and essentially um, shared and reused and improved by the user groups, the community, um, is uh, it started. Um, so if you go to the training guides um, out under the docs, if you go to the docs, you'll see that the training guides are there. Um, there's the upstream training is a, um, a major part of that. Um, so we can do a lot to improve that. Um, it's just the very tip of the iceberg of what we could do. Um, and it's mostly just around focus and resources. So if we had a lot more professional trainers, we've only really had um, two to three people that were involved in training 
uh, whatsoever involved in the, the effort. Um, it was mostly engineers, and we're really bad at, I mean, I'm, I've tried my best, but I'm not good at teaching people. So, um, so what we really need is professional trainers to get involved with these kind of efforts, and, <clears throat> and it's um, essentially donate part of their time to build up the, the materials um, and also get involved with uh, the OpenStack certified training standards effort. Um, there is about, it's, it's gone pretty fast in the last six months. I think there's about 20 people involved with that. So it's, it's accelerating, but the, um, that's more of the professional paid um, support side that's important, or professional training. We also need to build the other part, which is the community training. And it, we've, we've just like scratched the surface of what we could do. So I'm with you. I, I want that to happen. I'm really excited about the potential. We just haven't quite, the professional training community is very, uh, um, hard to tap into, I guess, is the best way I could put it. So I'd, I'd love to have more professional trainers get involved and come, come up and not only come up with ideas, but maybe a little bit of their time uh, once a week, you know, a couple hours here and there. Um, I think it would be uh, really informative for the trainers so they really understand the community they're training for um, and teaching, um, uh, well, just basically that. So. I don't know if anybody yeah, had anything to for, for the hardware resources, because the problem of Sufian was to get some servers uh, for, for university uh, on this part. You, you asked for, he spoke about TriStack or something, but it's more perhaps a small help, uh, not permanent resources, or, or trying to, to give you some servers uh, if we can find uh, uh, partners. Ah, so I went off on a totally different tangent, didn't I? <laughs> so um, there is the Intel effort. Um, I'm not. I have to admit, I'm not as um, I'm not as sure of where that's going. Um, Rackspace did have um, free development resources, but that's kind of winding down in favor of this new effort. Um, I'm optimistic that that's going to be um, much like what Rackspace used to support, which is essentially free accounts up to a certain capacity. Uh, there is obviously AWS. Um, and, uh, yeah, but, but it was quite difficult for them in Tunisia because uh, you, yeah, you can't. Yeah, they, they can't. <laughs> that they, little thing. <laughs> they, you can't use credit card. It, it was very difficult for them to get to get this type of free account. Or yep. So when I was at Yahoo a couple of years ago, um, uh, we I was trying to start a program to actually build out and all the the different MDXs that have capacity to start um, op allowing some kind of cluster to be built in every single one of those. But um, it's it's a very difficult to get that going. Go ahead. I I, I talk not only about uh, physical resource, but we can uh, we can help community to build uh, a training program like, uh, that is uh, uh, physical resource and course and. Uh, m many uh, other resources to build uh, training and to train the trainer and uh, to have um, uh, the same uh, update with uh, the community, other community, and the, the, uh, and the other aspect of OpenStack. Is that a statement? I'm not sure I got the question. Uh, the question, no, I lo the problem is so big is not only on the uh, physical resource like servers and other uh, uh, access, it's but... It's the people that teach, the mentors. Is that what you're yes. saying? Okay. okay. Yeah. So, so, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Sorry. He's looking for coursework. Yeah. So that's the upstream training. Yeah. That's the, that's what we have right now in the community. And it's, you know, it's a beginning. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's part of what we would need, but it's certainly not even close to being complete. So uh, Tom's asking us to focus on the speaker bureau. Oh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to take you back a page real quick just on. Okay, yeah. 
the logistics of the accepted official program for groups that have been around for a long time. I'm OpenStack LA, three, we're three years in. Are we essentially grandfathered in or do we have to go through the vetting process, the tick box process, as you call it, Tom? So there are groups that have been around a long time who aren't very good. Right, sure. Um, if you've been around a long time and you're good, you're not going to have a problem. Okay. Okay. So I just, I wanted to figure out where, in essence, square one, but getting okay. to the next squares will be pretty enough. easy. Okay. Good enough. Yeah, and that would be me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, the the vetting process is pretty simple. It's it's really common sense things, making sure that it's not purely marketing. It's not like, a, you know, a purely focused on selling stuff for a company, those kinds of common sense things. Any more questions? Any? Hello. Um, <clears throat> I'm uh, working in the French user group with Erwan. Um, would it be possible to recognize people in involvement in the user groups by giving them a full pass? Because there is a lot of people spending a lot of time uh, organizing meetups, and uh, I think they spend more time than some ATC here, uh, not, not here, but uh, in the summit, and it's absolutely not recognized by, uh, by the foundation. <laughs> so uh, ATC equivalent for con committed user group organizers. Okay, yeah. I agree. So the I unfortunately wasn't at the user group meeting yesterday. So um, does somebody want to recap the the discussion that was had on the speaker bureau and, and uh, it would be perhaps what, what more a board discussion. So Kavit on you, uh, yeah, it's something to to put on the board level of a foundation. Uh, sure, I mean. Yes, and, and it's not the first time I say yeah, that. Of course, of course. Uh, I think I, I think we need to find the right people at the foundation to take this up with. Uh, but I think this will also involve uh, the TC because I don't think the ATC status is given out by the board. I, I don't think. Yeah, technically. Yeah. So we need we need a different class of UTC. contributor. Yes, <laughs> we need a different class of contributor, and and you're absolutely correct because all of us here run user groups, right? And we know how much work it is, and how much effort it is, and it should definitely be recognized. And I will make sure I put it to the right people. Well, yeah. I, I think it's a discussion for the community mailing list. Mailing list. So just yeah. send a post to the community yeah. mailing list to start a discussion. Yeah. Just the same, the training requirements. Just yeah. uh, take action because. We have the travel support program. Maybe uh, you can apply. No, to it's it. not the same. We we don't have to beg yeah, yeah. our full pass. We have we uh, we earn it. You know, we don't have to ask VMware or somewhere. Okay, you you, you can ask for only for the tickets. Uh, okay. It's yeah, but it's not the same. Really, it's not the okay. same to ask a, a company. I don't feel like that. I don't feel um, okay. okay to to ask somebody. Please, can I be uh, selected so in the list? You don't want to have to demonstrate Art. that you've done anything. You just want no, to I, I can ask the process. ambassador. Uh, the ambassador can recognize the user group uh, uh, yeah. work. But the travel support program is designed for people who have contributed and will contribute. It's not limited to ATC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So we we funded the core reviewers, and they have to fill out the application for the travel support. But the, the intent is, I think, is similar. So um, I, I think uh, using the travel support program as kind of the model to extend additional um, privileges to the people that are indeed. But like, like I said, I, I think this is a whole of community discussion. I'd really like to see it happening in a in a global mailing list so everyone who's not here I'm can not participate. 
So does everyone know how to get on the community mailing list? Is that, is that widely understood? Uh, so if you go to um, uh, uh, list.openstack.org, there's a list of all the mailing lists, and it's literally easy enough, uh, as easy as finding the community uh, mailing list uh, line and just clicking on it and putting in your name and your boom, you're on. Uh, they'll also give you access to the archives. Um, so the community mailing list doesn't get nearly as much traffic as it should. Generally what seems to happen is people email us directly, which is fine, but um, it's even better if you emailed me through the mailing, community mailing list and you know just like made it attention me or something like that because then everyone kind of knows what's going on. It's a lot more, uh, we can always improve us working together uh, more as a wider group of people uh, rather than the one-off discussions. It's not nearly as productive. Yeah. So. Uh, just mentioning that the driver support program is very different from recognizing someone as a contributor. So it's, I think it's a different one. Uh, but if you see the documentation team, they were not ATC before, but sure. since community agreed that documentation work was really valuable for the community, now documentation team can get the ATC. So they get recognition. I think it's the same process. You put the mailing list that uh, user group organization in the world to recognize by community, then there will be discussion. Uh, and um, so that's what we need to do. That makes sense. It's better to keep discussing on the more, more the public mailing list. Maybe there are a lot of the people have another opinion or something. And uh, this is a, uh, anyway, a good opportunity to start, keep starting the, this topic, I think. After the, this session, let's try the starting from the meeting instead. Yeah. So, Any? how much time do we have left? Can I check? Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. All right, so speaker bureau. <laughs> <laughs> so, where did you guys leave this? Um, or maybe just kind of inform the, the wider crowd? You want me to? Yeah, go okay, great. Yeah. I run OpenStack LA. I took over the group about a year and a half ago. We're at about 900 members right now, which actually quite a, kind of surprised me for the SoCal area. Um, when I took over the group, it had sort of gone into a period, of, a, a quiet period, because the guy I took it over from was moving to Northern California, la da 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 da. I took over the group when I was still part of MetaCloud before the Cisco acquisition. Very important for us to be seen in OpenStack, so I took over the group. My biggest challenge, without question, and I could tell from the reaction I got in yesterday's meeting that I was not alone, that finding content and finding presenters is the hardest thing that you will do as a meetup organizer. I do it once a month. I know I have two working weeks to promote an event once I get somebody selected and get attendance. So that gives me basically two weeks to find someone from the morning I wake up after the last meetup two weeks to find someone, get them confirmed, hopefully get their company to provide a sponsorship for the event, and then promote the event out to my group. Basically what I'm recommending, you call it a speaker viewer, bureau, I'd like to see it maybe one step farther. I'd almost like to see the Yelp of speakers. And because I think, look, we've all had speakers come into our group that are fantastic. I've been super lucky. I've also had speakers that have just not lived up to the promise or changed course on me after sending me an abstract and say, I want to come in and talk about X, and next thing you know, X is a really deep product pitch. And I'm literally cutting them off at the mic, because my group runs when that kind of stuff starts to happen. They're there to hear about you know, use case, technology, what people are doing with OpenStack. So, I mean, again, my sort of challenge, call it what you want, would be to you know put that resource out. I'm lucky right now, I've got a backlog of speakers. I can't get them all in in the next six months. But for guys that are starting out or in different areas that are remote, hard to get people, I think something like this would be a huge resource. But I, I do think there should be some way for the people who brought a speaker in to not just list them as a speaker and put them on the bureau, but to provide some kind of feedback to the people who might also be interested in having that person come and you know present. This guy was super dynamic. This guy, the topic was great, but it was like, you know, eating dry paste, listening to him talk, whatever, you know, whatever it might be. But I just think it's a great resource to have. So 
so yeah, it's more our job uh, to, to push it. Uh, we, 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 we are discussing about some data that the foundation can give us, but we need to create a tool, so, so we have to do it now. On the, we keep uh, on, on collect few, few data contribution to, to create yeah, this yeah, data. Anyway, I think that first of all we need to define somehow our requirements, but not over design that, just start with yeah. something simple. Yeah. And we can build up this uh, tool as a part of this community portal we have, and it will be just a tool, so we need to start to promote it uh, and tell the people that you can you can uh, volunteer as a speaker, and maybe we can find out whether his company can support his travel right. and that type of things, right. and and maybe we can uh, split up it into a geographical area <laughs> where he can visit, or if someone is traveling around, maybe in Europe or some somewhere. Uh, we need to track that and, and maybe it is much easier if someone have a business trip uh, maybe into Berlin or something like that and he can jump in into a meetup group. So uh, excuse me for being a, a pragmatist, just in the interest of time and because this is a, a very important project, what's the next step? It sounds like we need to define a list of requirements and how is that going to happen? Yeah. Mailing list. <laughs> so, so but but okay. anyway, the growing up that this uh, the group page, group portal page is very important for the such kind of the argument. I think so. Example: just create uh, some the call for speakers buttons on the portal, and it, suddenly the such kind of the request could come to the suitable person. Such kind of things. Anyway, the this is the start of the uh, user groups branding. I think. And the main goal is, uh, uh, I think, the, it's much better to collaborate uh, each user group, each other's. And in this case, the uh, most first goal is uh, finding out the uh, right contact person for each region. So anyway, the growing up this group portal page is uh, one of the uh, good goal for the, our ambassadors, I think. So there's one other thing that um, I've been threatening to do for the last couple of months, and I'm actually going to do it now, is to an, um, start holding um, at least quarterly, uh, but if there's enough interest, we could do it monthly, um, essentially uh, meeting of ambassadors that I'm responsible for, or I should be interfacing with, like you. Um, so uh, the intent of that is to, um, we can start initially just focusing on um, organizing the, um, the speakers, but what I'd really like to do as well is I'd like to um, organize a kind of a subgroup um, of uh, marketing people that are interested in sponsoring um, uh, user groups and kind of get that spun out from that. Um, hopefully by us meeting, we can kind of collaborate on names of people we know that are interested in sponsoring and then spin that out. Um, I actually know of another team from my VMware days that is very interested in doing this as well as participating with the Speaker Bureau. So we could, um, with a little bit of collaboration amongst uh, the ambassador um, user groups, I think we could make a significant amount of headway. But um, I'm just as guilty as anybody else. I've been emailing people directly. I need to do it through the user group. I'll, so what I will commit to is I'll start dumping uh, my intent of that. Um, I'd like to see some information on um, the desire to have user group uh, collaborators um, get a um, ETC equivalent pass. I think the other thing was um, training material. Um, we need to see this kind of traffic on the on the um, community list. And then what we can do as ambassadors and Tom, we can start talk using that as um, reference material to go talk to the foundation, talk to possible sponsors. Um, without that, it makes it a little bit more hard because it's it's kind of just us. So we need it to be more than just us. So. So expect some email from me on the mailing list, and I hope to see you there too. So, do we, do we have time now? I, I don't know. How much time do we have? Oh, no. Yeah, we're over. All right. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. <laughs>